for giving me this opportunity to have my say on the budget estimates report from the Budget and Appropriation Committee. Speaker, I want to be very honest and very truthful. And one of the presidents, former presidents of the U.S. one time, Jefferson, said that honesty is the first chapter in the book of wisdom. So, Speaker, if you want to change the course of this country from an expenditure, revenue, and debt perspective, that power lies with parliament. It doesn't lie with the national treasury. It doesn't lie with the president. And this house must stop lamenting. So, Speaker, the new Public Finance Management Act in its architecture gives the National Assembly that power. Article 221, sub-article 4, Mr. Speaker, says, before the National Assembly considers the estimates of revenue and expenditure, a committee of the Assembly shall discuss and review the estimate and make recommendation. That is where we are today, Mr. Speaker. The Speaker, let's face the facts. Because as leaders, we will be counted. We will be remembered for putting this country into the worst debt crisis. Mr. Speaker, there's no way we are going to implement the 2021-2022 budget without raising the debt ceiling to $9 trillion. And I want this House to listen to me. Or more. Speaker, as we speak here, this House has raised the ceiling to $9 trillion. As we sit here, outstanding public debt as of June 2021 is 8.6 trillion. As we sit here today, then you add there are a lot of undisbursed loans since August last year to the tune of 1.3 that government has committed and paid commitment fees waiting for disbursement, which is also part of our debt, which is 1.3 trillion. When you do that, we are at 10 trillion, 10.03 trillion by the end of June this year, surpassing the 9 trillion debt ceiling this house. What does that mean? If you add the 952 billion that, the, 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 that this report is asking to finance the deficit, then we are talking about 11 trillion debt. That is the reality of the day. I'm the speaker. Let me go on record so that when I go, those of people who go to TV, when they ask, they don't misquote, they don't say, they don't lie. If we adopt, by adopting this report, we have indirectly altered the debt ceiling. It's as plain as that. The minister, tomorrow, if he brings for the increment of the debt ceiling, Nobody in this house should raise issues. And those who go to TV, you must have your facts right. And Mr. Speaker, I really want to ask you, what happened to Honorable uh, Bunyasi? Debt management bill. There was a debt management bill by Honorable Bunyasi, which was very critical to address all these issues. Mr. Speaker, you know, they say, if people are dying of malaria, don't blame the mortuary attendant. Yes, if people are dying of malaria, don't, don't blame the mortuary attendant. Blame yourself. Blame the doctor. Blame the pharmacist. I have seen people blaming the president. I have seen people blaming the national treasury. And all these other. The speaker, the 2010 constitutional architecture gave this august house, the National Assembly, all the powers in as far as budget making process is concerned, in as far as the, the, the management of debt, the management of finances of our country. Mr. Speaker, you know, looking at it, basically, I've looked at this report last night. The budget is 3.6 trillion. National executive is getting 1.89, parliament is getting 46 billion, judiciary is getting 17 billion, county governments are getting 370 billion. Look at what we call, and that is where the devil is, consolidated fund services, 1.3 trillion. 
That 1.3 trillion, 1 trillion is going to service debt. And I want to ask members, when you have free time, read, go back, you can even use the internet, read how countries like Greece, countries that suffered under serious debt crisis, we must stand up. Speaker, look at the quality of investment. This budget, every, every project, every investment, before we pump money into it, we must assess the quality of that investment to the people of Kenya and to the economy. Speaker, I, am, I have seen in the report, and the chair has done a good job, stall projects, and these are carried in public council committee, stall projects are to the tune of eight trillion. Eight trillion. Clearly, this country is like every shilling we collect, every hundred shilling that Kenya Revenue Authority collects, 66 shillings go to service debt. Speaker, let me bring the matter home. If I earn 200,000 shillings, I cannot budget for an expenditure of my family for one million shillings. But I say I earn 200,000 and I want my family to have an expenditure of one million shillings. That's exactly what's happening here. And our problem of debt, Mr. Speaker, it's not, in fact, the borrowing. Our problem of debt is a deficit. Year in, year out. And I think Honorable Kalini Kega, if you look at the previous uh, uh, budget committee reports, you see the problem is the moment we have a huge deficit from 500 billion, 600 billion, today we are at what, close to 1 trillion. The moment you have a deficit, then you will be forced to borrow. Where are we borrowing? According to this report, the domestic market or the domestic debt is at, from the 1952, the domestic debt is six, 661 billion. And from the foreign debt, they will borrow 291. When you borrow locally, what do you do to the economy? What do you do to Kenyan businessmen and Kenyan companies? Government competes Government then will compete with the private sector. And when the banks have a choice between a Kenyan business that wants to provide collateral against a government treasury bills, then banks will either raise the conditions and the interest rate for Kenyans to borrow against the government borrowing. So, Mr. Speaker, this again affects the growth of the private sector. Mr. Speaker, I have talked about uh, this issue of debt. And I want to tell people and say it, that our problem in budget making process and from the National Treasury is the discrepancy between revenue raised and the spending plans. They must tally, they must be consistent, they must agree to each other. You cannot have, when you cannot tell KRA under this COVID situation, and the Speaker, this House, the Budget Committee and the Finance Committee must do a deliberate at, uh, action to finance and to increase the budgetary allocation to Kenya Revenue Authority. You can't, you can't deny KRA extra resources to employ more staff, to employ more systems, to collect more, and then you want them to collect outside what has been, uh, 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 what has, what they have been told to, to collect. So, Mr. Speaker, when, when there's a discrepancy between the revenue uh, we raise and our expenditure, our spending plans, what happens? What does it drive to? It drives not only to a serious physical deficit, but at the same time, it will increase the stockpile of our public debt. Mr. Speaker, from this budget, the daily borrowing of government will be 2.6 billion. 66 shillings of every 100 shillings collected in revenue will service. Mr. Speaker, let me finish with this. And whether people like it or not, Kenya is technically in a debt fix. And government plays down. They don't want to tell us the, the debt exposure of our country. You know, it's good the government tells us that we, we, are, we are in a serious debt. But people want to cheat. They want to cheat their ego. So I will say